y'all, it's Gretchen and welcome back to my channel. There are things that I hear often within the Pearson community that show me people aren't entirely sure what certain words actually mean, refer to. Like sometimes you'll see people refer to stretch lobes as gauge in your ears, things like that. So for today's video, I thought I would go over some common terms that deal with Pearson's and like their definitions for them and what they specifically mean and how they are used in conversation, just so there's no confusion about those terms. And I do have it broken down into like general terms and then I do have like jewelry terms. Now the things I'm not gonna cover in this video are different types of Pearsons. So I'm not gonna run down a list of all the Pearsons that are out there for you to get. We're not gonna go over navel, eyebrow, nape, tongue, nose. We're not gonna go over each of those because those are separate videos. We're also not gonna go over jewelry types just because I've done videos like that before, but we'll do an extensive list specifically, like a, a specific video about jewelry materials later on, otherwise we'd be here forever. This is just gonna be terms that you hear while you're at the Pearson shop, within the Pearson community, as you're going around on YouTube, maybe on Reddit, Instagram, things like that, you're gonna see these terms pop up. So that's basically what this is gonna be. We're gonna have like just common Pearson terms and then we're gonna have some jewelry related terms that are not jewelry material terms. Does that make sense? I hope so. These are also not in alphabetical order because I could not be bothered to do that. I'm just gonna be honest. I have a list on my phone I made in Google Docs of all the terms that I felt like we should go over. I even asked Instagram if there were any terms. Pretty much everyone said the same things that I had written down, so we're good on that front. So if I do miss any terms, you can put them in the comments below. I had some people say that I should mention swelling and itching and stuff like that. Like those aren't really Pearson specific terms though. Those are just terms that you should know, I hope. Okay, let's get into it. All right, so I gave you the example of gauge and stretch in ears. So the first word we're gonna start with is gauge. Gauge is the thickness of jewelry. There you have it. That's it. Doesn't have anything to do with the process of stretching your ears. It's the thickness of your jewelry. So when you talk about your forward helix being a 16 gauge, that refers to the thickness of the jewelry that you have in there. Next is the Pearson needle. What exactly is that? It's a sharp tool used to create a Pearson. Usually these are hollow in the middle so that it allows for jewelry to be attached to one end so it just kind of threads it through. You know, some may come across like threaded Pearson needles where the piercer will actually screw the jewelry onto the needle and pull it through that way. More often than not though, they'll use a hollow one but just in general terms, a Pearson needle creates the Pearson. Aftercare, everyone's favorite part of the whole Pearson process. What is aftercare? It's the process and routine in order to heal a Pearson. Keloid, okay, so this one gets tossed around a lot, which is why I just wanna give you the basic understanding of it, because I understand why people get confused with a keloid and a hypertrophic scar. Now we've done a video all about hypertrophic and atrophic scars, so if you wanna check that one out, head up there, but a keloid, what exactly is it? A keloid is scar tissue that has built up around a wound. It is usually very thick and raised. It sometimes doesn't pop up until much later on and it grows beyond the site, beyond the wound site. A keloid gets pretty big. Hypertrophic scars, which is usually what we experience when it comes to a Pearson, don't get big. Keloids get pretty massive. Go Google what a keloid looks like. Promise you what you have is not a keloid. Which leads me into hypertrophic scar. Again, entire video all about that, but, but again, it is a thick raised scar around the Pearson site, though not as extensive as a keloid. Keloids are pretty rough. And they take a lot of treatment to get rid of, whereas a hypertrophic scar, typically you can kind of deal with yourself. Atrophic scar, again, go check out that video, but it's an indented scar that heals below the skin. It's gonna be indented instead of raised. Stretching, so we talked about gauges and how that does not mean that you gauged your ears, you stretched your ears. So stretching refers to gradually expanding a healed Pearson, a healed Pearson. Repeat that with me, a healed Pearson. Don't try and stretch something that's new or still healing, but that's what the process is. Is, is stretching. So you're stretching your ears to a specific size. You're not gauging your ears to that size. And now you know. The more you know. 
rejection. I have an entire video about rejection and migration as well, but to just go over that and give you a basic definition, it's when the body sees the jewelry in your Pearson as a foreign object and feels that it needs to leave the body, so it pushes that jewelry out entirely. It rejects it. It's just like, you gotta go. So you will find with a rejection that more and more the jewelry will be more shown through the skin until it is completely out. Migration, on the other hand, is when you notice that the jewelry shifts from its original Pearson site. So it starts here, and then all of a sudden you notice it's over here, that's migration. Migration hasn't quite gotten to the point of rejection yet, however, it can. Autoclave. Autoclave is something that you might hear discussed while you're at the Pearson shop. This is a sterilization machine that is used to sterilize the jewelry as well as Pearson tools. It's a pretty cool looking thing too. Fistula is the hole created by a Pearson. So you know when you, you take your jewelry out and you see the little Pearson hole? It actually has a name. It's called a fistula. Clamp. No one enjoys a clamp, but sometimes it's necessary. And it's a tool sometimes used to aid in the Pearson process. I always mention this. Clamps aren't always going to be used. It's up to the preference of the piercer. However, sometimes it's a little bit more useful to use them than not. And also the other way around, sometimes it gets in the way. But it's like these little forceps that'll go on the Pearson site that have like a little hole in there that just kind of helps hold the Pearson steady or where the Pearson will be. Anodized, this one was actually requested that I make sure I cover and I already had it on my list, but I'm glad that people said that I should cover this one. So anodized refers to electrolytic process used to increase the thickness of jewelry. This can also result in color change in as well as a more protective layer on the jewelry. So like if you see anodized titanium and how it comes in a whole bunch of fun colors, it's gone through the process of being anodized. And now it's like a thickened layer on there, more protective layer on there. It's pretty cool. Infection. This should kind of go without saying what an infection is, but it's when bacteria enters a site and blah, 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 blah. that's the scientific way to put that. Lymph. Now, this is a fun one, and this one goes along with another one that I'm gonna also bring up, but lymph is the white or clear fluid that secretes from a Pearson site, and when it dries, it forms crusties. That's actually what the fluid is, it's lymph fluid. So whenever you see that white or clear fluid that's leaking, and if you don't clean it right away, it leads to it getting all crusty around there, that's lymph. Which then kind of goes along with sebum because sometimes people confuse the two. Sebum is the oily secretion from the skin. Usually you're gonna find that with stretched lobes. It'll usually mix with dead skin cells. So when you take a plug or a tunnel out and you see like that layer of something, around the jewelry, that's sebum mixed with dead skin cells. But it's an oily secretion that's actually meant to moisturize the skin. Jojoba oil. You may hear this tossed around quite a bit within the piercing community. This is a type of oil used to moisturize the skin around a piercing site because sometimes you'll find that your piercing gets pretty dry and it's important to make sure that it stays moisturized. Jojoba oil is a really good oil option, which also leads me into tea tree oil. This is definitely gonna be something that you see within the piercing community, both positive and negative. Negative. You have a lot of people that like it, you have a lot of people that hate it, and there are some people that are like, meh. This is a type of oil used to kill bacteria as well as cleanse the skin. I have an entire video about tea tree oil. Might redo it though. I've learned a little bit more about tea tree oil since that video, but we're not gonna get into that for this one. Downsizing. This was also a requested term that I had on my list. It made me feel better to know that people wanted to see what this was. Downsizing is the process of switching jewelry to a shorter bar. So like your Helix piercings, when you first get them done, they're gonna be pierced at a pretty long length to account for swelling. Downsizing is taking that long initial length and going down to one that's a little bit better for that piercing site. This is an important step to maintaining a healthy piercing because the problem is if you don't downsize, and this happened with one of my double helix piercings and it took me a while to figure that one out. I didn't downsize and when I accidentally slept on them, they ended up healing kind of at an angle. So you wanna downsize so that you don't risk that extra long bar potentially messing up the healing process for your piercing. All right, so those are just some of the common terms that you're gonna hear. Now we're gonna move on to more jewelry related ones. And again, I'm not going over like different materials for this. These are just jewelry terms as a whole that you're gonna hear. So the first one, barbell. So a barbell is a straight bar that goes through the piercing and either has balls on the end or flats and like a decorative piece on the other end. And that's basically what it is. It's just this 
bar with two ends that goes to the piercing. Threadless jewelry. I've done an entire video about threadless jewelry as well. I love threadless jewelry. All of my jewelry are threadless. It's essentially a two-part system that doesn't require screwing the pieces together. And how it works is you have your piece, you have your decorative piece, you push it in there, you bend it so that it perfectly fits that bar and it's pretty difficult for it to pop out. O-ring. This is a ring, usually rubber, that goes on the end of a single flare plug or tunnel. So with stretch lobes, anything like that, you're gonna find that an O-ring holds it in place if it is single flare. If it's double flare, it doesn't need an O-ring, but a single flare one, because it's only big on one side, that O-ring helps hold it in place so that it won't fall out. You'll see these usually either clear or black, Though I have seen some colored O-rings before. I think I saw a hot pink one once before. It was kind of fun. So then you have internally threaded jewelry. This is what I used to use before I switched to threadless jewelry. So what this means is the two pieces are gonna screw together. Internally threaded means that the screw is attached to the ball or the decorative piece and it screws into the bar jewelry and screws in that way. Whereas then you have externally threaded, which is the opposite. The bar has the screw on the end and then the bar or the decorative piece has to screw onto the bar. So that's externally threaded. It's not attached to the little piece at the end. Retainer. I've talked a bit about retainers before. This is jewelry that's either clear or flesh colored that is meant to hide a piercing or make it less noticeable while keeping it open. It's also usually not gonna be metal. It's either gonna be glass or it's gonna be bioplast something like that. You're usually gonna find if you have to have surgery of some kind, you'll need to swap to retainers. Captive bead ring or CBR. This is a ring style jewelry that holds a bar in the middle between the ends and holds it in place. I also have an entire video about how to get one of those undone because they're kind of difficult. Circular barbell. This is also referred to as horseshoe jewelry. So it's that horseshoe style with either balls on the end or a decorative piece or some kind. But those are the ones that you'll usually find in septum piercing so that you can flip it up easily. Curved barbell. It's a barbell with a slight curve. You're gonna find these usually in rooks or navel piercings or eyebrow piercings. Segment ring. These are the types that I personally enjoy having in my septum piercing. These are rings with a hinged segment that opens up. Septum clickers. These are pretty similar to the segment ring, except for they're a little bit more decorative. You know, segment rings can still be decorative, but they're usually pretty plain. Whereas septum clickers do also have that hinge that opens and closes, but it's specifically formulated for the septum and usually has a decorative under part. Seamless ring. Now this is a type of captive ring, so it is gonna be the ring shape. However, there's no like segment hinge that opens and closes. There's no ball in the middle like a CBR. It's one of those ones where it's pretty much seamless except for just this tiny little opening between the two ends. And how you deal with that is you twist them away from each other in order to open and close them. Taper. This is not jewelry. The taper is a tool used to stretch expand a piercing site. This is a long instrument where it's bigger on one end to help with that stretch. It is not meant to be used as jewelry. Please stop wearing it as jewelry. A plug, usually a cylindrical piece of jewelry that is solid in the middle. There's a tunnel is a usually cylindrical piece of jewelry that is hollow in the middle. I have in tunnels today. They're hollow in the middle. I can shove my finger through them. That's a fun party trick. And then the last thing on my list is Bioplast. I just referred to that in the retainer definition. Bioplast is an alternative to metal jewelry. This is a popular option for those with extreme sensitivities to metals. It is hypoallergenic and it is pretty flexible and it can be used in the autoclave without the material being broken down which is pretty cool. All right, so these are just some common terms that you're gonna come across within the piercing community, whether it's while you're at the piercing shop with your piercer or you're online in some community, Instagram, Reddit. I don't know why I keep going to Reddit because I'd never use Reddit myself, but these are terms that you're gonna see come up. Again, I'm gonna do an entire video talking all about the different types of materials as well as just a quick rundown of most piercings possible because there's a lot that you could get and I'm probably gonna miss a lot, but those will become later. Let me know in the comments below what terms you were unfamiliar with, which ones I accidentally left off. Be nice, I tried to do my best. But let me know if there were some terms that you felt like should have been on this list. What are some terms that you think get confused a lot within the community? Cause that's stretching in the gauge one. Those are the ones that I see a lot get confused. Well, let me know. Special thank you to my patrons. 
You can help support the channel on Patreon while having access to videos early, view and patron only content and more. But that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a big old thumbs up. Go on down there, hit that subscribe button. Also hit that notification bell so that YouTube will let you know when I upload next. But until next time, bye all.